and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode 10. It's the season one finale of Fargo. We've done it. Season one completed by the end of this episode. This episode is called Morton's Fork. This is really interesting. So Morton's Fork is basically the false dilemma which is a kind of Lorne Malvo's trick. As I think we were talking about that way back when he, you know, first couple of episodes where he was, the way that he manipulates people is he gives them Morton's fork tonight. He gives them false dilemmas. You know, you do this or you do that. What's it going to be? It's like there are so many other options. So it's a false dilemma where two contradictory observations lead to the same conclusion. The example that they give here is that John Morton is demanding gifts for the royal treasury and if a man lived well he was obviously rich and if he lived frugally then he must have savings. So it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't always. He's he's always going to see a rich man is the point. Whatever the behaviour, even if the behaviours are totally opposite. So the idea of someone presents a false dilemma is either they are so kind of transfixed on their view of events that they won't even blink about the fact that they're using contradictory pieces of evidence to make that case and on the other hand it's the type of false dilemma i'm talking about where what a person wants to do is lead you to a a predetermined conclusion by presenting contradictory um things in this way i find it really interesting it's one of my um it's one of my favourite observations, actually, when I see people using Morton's Fork. And I didn't even know what it was called before I did the research for this particular episode. So, yeah, I, I mean, you could have called this season Morton's Fork. As far as I'm concerned. But yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. Episode 10. Uh, let's... I've already got my earphones in. I've just realised. This is how eager I am for this episode. I'm not even... There's not even a little... A second. Where I'll put my earphones in. Anyway. Let's have at it. The snow ski. Is that where they... Drilled that guy into the ice? Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh. No. Uh. You let your wife die. How is he even going to explain this? Who shot her? You're fuck mate. He's not running off to Acapulco on his own with a dead... Pulls. This is going to be some... Mm. This is the karma I'm hoping for. That he goes down for both murders. His wife, first wife, and his second wife. Even though he didn't commit the second one. Because that is universal karma. So he got away with one. So now he's going to have to be falsely implicated in another one. Although, to be honest, ethically... I, culpability wise he's as culpable as Lord Malvo for me he literally sent her in there not only just sent her in there but deliberately put her in his coat so that she could be mistaken for him and then as if that wasn't buttering the bread thickly enough he's then like hey love put your head up You're dead to me, Lester. Play. What the fuck? She only wanted someone who was going to take her away from that nasty little hotel motel situation. He's not. He's not. Oh no, she didn't! Oh yes, she did! Just you? Uh, no, there's uh, it, it'll be... 
two of us. Lynn was just uh, grabbing something over by the shop. She dropped me off, said, order the grilled cheese. So uh, I guess uh, two of those. And I'll, uh, I'm gonna use the bathroom. Three with the meal. It's powerful, yeah! Powdered sugar! Setting up an alibi. Over on Elkham Third, gunshots. Real loud, like about uh, 10 seconds ago. They're still gonna know it was the phone that was right Thank there, Lester. That's great. Thanks. Linda's just, uh, well, she dropped me off, grabbed something over the shop, and said she had to pick something up. Yeah, you said that. You know, there was a fella in here earlier asking about you. About me? Yeah, uh, silver hair, little goatee. What, what, did, he, what did you tell him? He said if you wanted to leave a number, I'd give it to you. Can't say I much liked his demeanor. Well, sorry for the bother. No bother. Thought you ought to know. Oh, my God. Salverson. Wait, what? The other one now? <laughs> Well, where's Lester? Unbelievable. Okay, put out an APB. I'm getting my code. What's that now? Someone killed the second Mrs. Nygert. <laughs> there we go. Well, Bill, what you got to say about this? Hey, didn't they have to come? Now, we both know that's not true. She's wearing his coat. Meaning? Meaning maybe it's not Linda supposed to be lying here. Oh, Lester. Mr. Nygaard? Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let's go. get him. Oh, jeez. I'm going to be sick. Okay, I'm going to be sick. Uh, wait, do, do you, do you think, can I, can I just say goodbye? He is not. No, this is an active crime scene. Oh, of course you can. Sir, you go ahead and take your time. Bill! What the fuck are you doing? Bill is such a... It's a crime scene. Forensics. Like, it's... Now it's fucked. The moment he's... Yeah. Ruined. Touching the body, sir. No. Well, of course not. I'm sorry. I, I just so. He's not going to go quietly. I don't know why I expected... I still expected Molly to win this because I can't believe they're going to shoot a pregnant woman, but... We're awake, right? Who? Us. <laughs> oh my God. You're asking if we're awake? You know, sometimes uh, you're in the middle of a dream. Do you say everything that comes to your head? Coroner saying a single shot from uh, close up uh, said they found feathers in her head from her hood. They were stuck in. <laughs> you remember you came by with those FBI fellows earlier, and I was looking out the glass. With a peculiar look on your face? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a fella in just before you got there. And he was asking about Lester. Silver hair brushed back uh, with a goatee. Drove a red BMW. This fella? Unless he changed his whole. 
Although maybe. Oh, Molly, uh, we're going in. Let Gus know. That... Tell him it's going to be all night. Oh, screw that. Get my gun is what I'm doing. Go sit on the front porch. Make sure my granddaughter's safe. Oh. You're a good man. Oh, bless him. I love that they're all just like we're family. It's absolutely beautiful. Bollocks. Tell me she's not still lying there and everyone's just stepping over her. Mr. Nygaard, these fellas are from the FBI. The what? Lorne Malvo. On a scale from one to ten, my friend, your fuck is dead. <laughs> He's not gonna stop. You know that, right? Yes! A man like that, maybe not even a man. This is making me so happy. There is some consensus this uh, Malvo fella may be back. Where's Molly? Left her at the precinct last night. Had Lester Nygaard in custody. About to talk to him. I'm going after her. Keep an eye on Greta. Believe me, I mean to. Oh! He's adorable! Okay, so the plan is we fan out. Prowlers on all the main roads looking for Malvo. Encircle the town, in other words. Uh, there's pick... Yeah. Well, there are three main roads, so actually, more of a triangle. Oh, this guy. Yeah, so things are, uh, they're real, they're real busy here, hon. Look, hon, don't, okay? I, I gotta ask you not to, don't go out there. You personally don't go looking for- It's my job. Yeah, I, I know, and you're amazing and the best, and, and I have no doubt that if you wanted, you could handcuff Al Capone, but mm -hmm. some days, Sometimes you get forces you can't control. Bottom line, I can't make her go to another funeral, you know? Yeah. Oh. Okay, oh, don't worry. I'll just, um... Yeah, I'll run things from here. Okay. Good. Hey, is my dad there? Yeah. Yeah, he's on the porch with a shotgun. <laughs> Gotta love a man who keeps his word, right? Hmm? <laughs> you promise? Yeah, he won't leave the building until they call and tell me he's surrounded. No. Until he's dead. I'll call you in a little bit, okay? Pulse. Okay, so I totally get... That's a really tough one. I don't know what Molly's gonna do. Because she's really good to the people that she loves. She's honest and straightforward. Which would mean if she tells Gus, I'm not going after him, then she's not going after him. But she's also really ambitious and she's like a cop in her blood and she's brave. And like, she attaches to things, you know, it's like a you know, she's on the case. And I can't imagine her walking away from it now. So I'm really not sure what... I, I'm genuinely not sure what's going to happen, is what I'm trying to say. I can't go... And I don't, don't even know what I prefer to happen, if I'm honest. I want her to live. I kind of want her to stay. But again, she's a cop in her role. We need to respect her and trust her to get the job done. But I'm sure I wouldn't be saying that, you know, if I had plans to bring up a baby with her or she was taking care of my daughter. 
Oh, yeah. Well, co-parent. He, he's not that kind of a guy. Man, this episode. Play. Gus, mate. I thought that was going to be Lord Malvo then. I really did. No! No! No, I don't want him to kill Gus! No, no, no! Gus, fuck off! Do not make Greta attend another funeral, please, Gus. You've just told Molly this. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Good. Better hope he doesn't see your bloody car. It's like fucking Jaws. Lorne Malvo is the shark. And you're just like freaking out because there's a kid on a lilo about to sell by. Oh, I swear. What are you doing? Gus, please go home. He's not even a cop anymore. This is technically breaking and entering if you go in there. Trespassing at least. It's not breaking it under anything or broken it either. 